And so if you don't have enough guidance, that can lead to a student basically saying, you know what, I don't like this, fuck it, I'm leaving. What's up guys, welcome to another video. And today we're gonna be talking about why people leave engineering. And I know there's obviously, <laughs> there's a lot of reasons why people could leave a major. But I wanted to point out a couple today because I think that I have feedback and I have some recommendations for you that are going to help you overcome the struggles and obstacles that this study from the University of Washington actually found from the Center for the Advancement of Engineering Education. Uh, you can see it on the screen right now and it's the paper is titled Why Students Leave Engineering, The Unexpected Bond. And they actually, I found it really interesting because there's a couple of things that we don't really think about when people leave engineering. Um, and I'm gonna go over those in a few seconds. But first, if you are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Alex Isidro, and here I talk about engineering career and life in general. I get some insight and some lessons learned from my life. And if you have any questions, don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I'm going to leave my handle somewhere here. That's where I post daily stories, and I'm a little more active than I'm here on YouTube. All right, so with that being said, let's go jump right back to the video. Let's go over first about how they actually came to these conclusions and the first thing they did is obviously they identify the specimen or the people that they were going to study and they took about approximately 160 undergraduate students and they monitor their life their lives and especially the challenges that they face in the first three years of their, of their education. But I actually want to jump to the conclusions and the findings from this study. And they see, and they say the research team found that major issues that led to a student's leaving engineering majors, number one, lack of faculty guidance and advisement. And I, I completely un I agree with that because when it really comes to engineering, Sometimes you know that you want to major in engineering, but a lot of times you don't know which type of engineering field you want to get into. Uh, also, I want to say that I think a lot of engineering people or a lot of engineering students actually, they get into engineering not really knowing what to expect. Sometimes they just get into it because they think it's cool, but little do they know it may sound cool, but it doesn't mean that you're gonna like it. And so if you don't have enough guidance, that can lead to a student basically saying, you know what, I don't like this, fuck it, I'm leaving. And the number two reason they mentioned here is the lack of community engagement. Now, I wish the paper actually expanded a little bit more on what this actually means. However, I think that that makes sense because when you are in engineering, when you are a first year or second year, if you don't have a community or if you don't have a couple of friends that you hang out with, or if you don't have professors that can guide you and kind of them be part of the community, kind of be leaders or advisors, whatever, if you're doing it on your own, basically, it can be very, very stressful because there is a lot of uncertainty. There is a lot of unknown material that you're going over. Uh, you're just kind of figuring things out. Uh, you don't know what to expect. And when everything is new and there, there's a lot of uncertainty, that can lead to a student saying, you know what, I don't like this. I don't like the amount of stress that all these classes are causing me. I don't know anybody to discuss things with. And so, you know what, fuck it, I'm leaving. And so I think it also makes sense for a lack of community engagement to lead to engineers leaving the field. Another one, another big one, in my opinion, is scholarships and financial dilemmas. When you are in engineering school, you need time. Number one, you need a lot of time to think. You're gonna be spending a lot of time working on your classes. And so you can't really, I mean, you can, but it's gonna be a lot more difficult when you're actually paying yourself and putting yourself through college and making, I don't know, maybe 10, 12 bucks, 20 bucks an hour. That's pretty high, 20 bucks. But my point is that you're gonna be needing time to focus. And if you are working full time or even part time, that is going to be taken away the time that you need to study. And so if you have financial difficulties when you're in college and you're going through engineering school, that can put a lot more stress to your life stress that you really don't need anymore because you because you are putting yourself through a lot of stress through engineering school so i definitely think that financial aid is a reason why people leave engineering school because sometimes they need more time to work and you only have so much time during the day and so that may lead to people leaving and the other half of this reason is scholarships and i was reading here that they mentioned on how what happens is when you have a scholarship and you enter engineering school, 
when you have a scholarship, you have certain requirements that you need to meet, a certain GPA, certain grades. And so after the first semester or second semester in engineering, if you happen to fault, if you happen to fail at keeping those grades and those minimal requirements, you may get your scholarship taken away. And what that means is that if you want to keep it, you either bring your grades up, which in engineering can be very difficult. If you start on the bat on the, if you start on the wrong foot in engineering, it's going to be a little difficult, not impossible to bring your grades back up. But you may not have enough time to retain your scholarship and so your scholarship may be taken away. So what do people do? What they do is they transition to other easy majors that are going to help them keep their grades up so that they can keep their scholarships. And I think there should be a little more leniency per se when it comes to engineering scholarships. And the final reason why they mention people quit or leave engineering school is because the course course difficulty. And guys, I promise you this was me when I was in calculus one. They basically mentioned here that calculus one and two are the reason why a lot of people leave engineering. And I cannot agree with that enough because I went through the struggle of facing calculus one and almost almost changing my major i think i've already shared this in a video before but i remember you know when i was taking calculus one everything was so new everything was just i get nightmares every time i think about that class calculus one it made that much of an impact in my engineering career so now that we kind of have an idea on this paper is really not that long it's only a couple of pages but i think the reasons they outline here uh, do make sense in my opinion and so what i want to do now is i want to give you a couple of recommendations on how you can overcome these issues and these obstacles that you may face when you enter engineering school so the first recommendation that i have for you here is when you are about to take calculus which we just learned that calculus is one of the reasons why people leave engineering school the number one recommendation that I have for you is to get the best teacher and for this you're gonna have to sign up early you're gonna have to get on top of your game in order to get the best teacher because I think that and I think most people can agree the teacher that you get for certain classes can make a huge difference on whether you learn something or not the other recommendation that I have for you when you are facing these very difficult classes is to use a whiteboard and just kind of put everything just use a classroom or go to an area where you have a big piece of the wall be part of the wall and you can actually use that to do your calculations in the study because in my experience that made a huge difference on whether or not I was able to understand some concepts the next tip that I have for you is to look for help vis visit advisors uh, find an online community or uh, or in person whatever fits your interest or your liking where you can like share what you don't understand and kind of like talk to them uh, don't don't do it alone if you can help it because again having a group of friends or having a group of study buddies can make a huge difference on whether you understand something or don't uh, not only that but i think it also can save you a lot of time if somebody can take a few minutes or an hour of their time to to teach you uh, things that you don't understand and so it's going to help you get over the bump and overcome in those very very difficult classes the other recommendation that i have for you is to anticipate the difficulties of a major now we know that calculus one and two are huge headaches for engineering students and so if you're watching this and you're thinking about majoring in engineering make sure that you don't get discouraged and you expect calculus to be difficult and expect it to take a lot of time now if you get to calculus and you think it's really easy then good for you enjoy it my friend you're very smart extremely smart <laughs> at least smarter than i am another recommendation that i have for you to alleviate the financial hardship that you may run into when you go into engineering school is to apply for as many scholarships as possible this is something perhaps that you'll learn about or perhaps you can also attend a community college to save a little bit of money where you can also perhaps um, work while you go to a community college when you go to a university and you work it's a little more difficult 
uh, because universities don't really expect you to work. But when you're in a community college, you are kind of expected to work or at least people that work and go to school full time usually go to community colleges. But that's something that you can consider. I made a video about that in the past, so you can check that out if you're interested. And remember nowadays, guys, nowadays in 2020, uh, I think it was in 2018 when it was implemented where you can now negotiate your college tuition. So you don't have to go all in on the tuition number that a certain university gives you, at least in the United States. And the last recommendation that I have for you is to just focus on more than just your grades. You know, focus on growing your network, focus on being personable. Um, and I think that that's, that's going to make the big difference once you actually graduate. And even like, even if you really have a low GPA and by low, I mean less than 3.0, but higher than a 2.5. I think that if you have good relationships when you're in college, when you're in engineering school, uh, you're going to be just fine. All right, guys. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk to you about today in this video. Uh, I hope this video is useful and it prepares you for the future if you haven't entered engineering school yet, but you are planning on getting there. And I hope it helps you prepare and kind of foresee and expect some difficulties and challenges uh, in your first and second year of engineering school. And of course, I hope, I hope this video helps you prepare for those challenges, which is the goal here. All right, so with all that being said, if you like the content of the channel, consider subscribing, but make sure for sure to at least like this video. Thank you guys for being here. I appreciate you and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.